Welcome back to Buses, Bikes, and Beers, and to our ongoing adventures with our good friend Matt, whom we first met in Taiwan. In our last episode, we left Grassy Lake Reservoir and entered Yellowstone National Park. This episode starts the following morning after a nice night at the Madison Campground. It is a bright and early morning. Well, yeah, probably not too early, but it's a nice, beautiful day in Yellowstone National Park. And uh, we're going to make some coffee. And then we're going to get Beth out of the van. And then we're going to eat breakfast. We're going to pack up. We're going to go explore Yellowstone today. Yeah. Let's see if we can see some critters. Looking forward to it. Yeah. <clears throat> Good morning, baby. Welcome back. I made it. Where were you? Went to the recycling. We just stopped the, what is it? Gibbons. Gibbons Falls. Falls, very pretty. And now we're gonna keep heading north. We're in search of wildlife today. I'm, I'm going to count how many people stop and talk to them about their car today. <laughs> yeah. We can't go anywhere without somebody talking about the van. Or wanting to talk about the van. Uh-oh. We lost one. Yeah. What was it? A uh, chipmunk. Oh. Your dad asked me, that was the first thing he asked me when we got back from Island Park. Did you see any chipmunks? And I hadn't. Oh. That was the first thing. drove up from the campground, which was in Madison Junction, just sort of in the west central part of Yellowstone National Park. And we took the road north. We're now in Mammoth Hot Springs, which is in the northwest sort of part of the park. Now we're trying to decide are we gonna go right and go east to uh, Tower, the Tower area or are we gonna backtrack and go to Canyon where the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone and Yellowstone Falls are, do some hiking. We'll see.
We're going on a little hike. What's it are. called? Sheep? Sheep Eater Cliff. Sheep Eater Cliff. It's named for the Shoshone Indians. Is that the Sheep Eater Cliff there? The sheep are eating that cliff for sure. Why do the sheep eat a cliff? I'm guessing it's more the other way, where the cliff eats the sheep because they fall down it. Yeah, I think it's the Indian, the Indian chief who was named Sheep Eater. Oh, you think that? Yeah, because it's named mm. for the Shoshone Indians. That could be. Yeah. You might be onto something. I think I am. Well, we're going to go see what we can see up this trail. Matt's got his hiking approved flip flops on. <laughs> <laughs> They were cheering you on, Matt. I heard them cheering you on. It's sort of cool how the stone has just naturally fallen off this cliff over time, you know? I would not want to be here when a bunch of it decided to cut loose. Cut loose. Oh, what happened to the trail? It's here. Did you do much hiking in Taiwan? Like, did you ever go up to Seven Star or Buffalo Meadows or any of those places? You should have hung out with us more, Matt. Yeah. We could have taken you to these great places. You can see from this fallen tree. that this tree has been through a fire. And in fact, if you really look at these trees that are falling down, they all look that way. Because this is a section of Yellowstone National Park that about 30 years ago when I was in high school, or maybe I was in college, this part of the, this part of the park went through a forest fire. Because it's a national park, they don't go clean this stuff up because they want the park to be left in its natural state. This is the way a forest naturally takes care of itself. These trees, these new trees, are a result of the fire popping open the pine cones, which is a tree's natural seed. It's the heat of the fire that pops them open, makes them germinate, and these trees are all about 30-ish years old. And uh, that's this forest repopulating itself but it's sort of fun to walk around and see the various life stages life cycle stages of a forest yeah if you can see across that cliff those are all relatively small trees because a fire moved down through here i went through the enchanted forest and got enchanted uh, how does it feel to be enchanted wonderful enchanted Lunchtime. It is indeed lunchtime. After the little hike, it's lunchtime. Mm. It's a great picnic spot. It is a great picnic spot next to the sheep eater cliff. We made it to Canyon Village and the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone. And now we're going to go for a little hike down to those falls. Let's go check it out. We got to see the epic lower falls, Yellowstone Falls. And now we're climbing up this climbing up this switchbacks. Switchbacks back to the top of the trail where the cars parked. But wow, epic. Such a beautiful canyon. But now we hike.
Yeah. I think the, the other one's better. Yeah. But it's still pretty. Well, you don't have the canyon here. Oh, look up there. We made it back from the hike. Everything looks good. We are now going to. Oops. It's time for us to leave Yellowstone, but we got to drive all pretty much almost all the way through the park, or at least a quarter through the park. So. Well, people, we made it to Henry's Lake State Park. We're back in the state of Idaho. We're having a huckleberry lemonade to celebrate our success. I, I can't tell you enough how the best. Yeah, super awesome, like end of Yellowstone day. Like, yeah. Those falls were incredible. The falls were great. The, the hike, I mean, everything was just awesome. What? We decided to just get on the bikes and see what there is to see at Henry's Lake State Park before it gets too dark. String ball. String ball. The sky's a little hazy because there's a forest fire a couple of mountain ranges over, which is unfortunate, but it's still so pretty. Sunday morning, Henry's Lake State Park. We uh, we had some neighbors next door in a sprinter van come over and share our fire last night. And yeah, fire sunrise. Fire sun. That's actually the sun. There's so much smoke in the air from the forest fires, which sucks. And look what Matt brought. Hmm. And since we're at the state park where there's power, we get this. No Folgers crystals for us today. Oh yeah. Coffee's almost ready.
Mesa Falls Scenic Byway, which is a very nice two-lane road with a 50 mile an hour speed limit, which is just perfect for our old van. And up here, I'll bet, is uh, we're gonna take a hike and go see the upper and lower Mesa Falls. So we're gonna go on a nice hike, and yeah, that's the big plan. Then we don't know after that. Maybe we'll probably have lunch. We'll have lunch. <laughs> we'll have lunch. We'll have then lunch. we're gonna meander on home to Idaho Falls. We made it. We're parked. We got our water. We're going on a hike. I got to get over the fact that we're in a gravel parking lot. I just washed the van. Anyway, when we get back, the van's going to be covered in dust. It doesn't matter. Just washed it. Oh. Look at that. Well, we did have a yeah, I've never been here before. That looks awesome, the way the water just disappears. Where does it go? Well, another awesome waterfall. Yeah, there's a lot of water balls. We're just on a beautiful hike. This is called the Mesa Falls Nature Trail. Yes. Very nice. Yeah, it's really pretty. It's a mile. We've probably gone half that already. But it's a beautiful trail, isn't it, baby? It is. I get close to these cliffs and I actually start to feel like I got vertigo. I don't know, man. I, as I get older, the less, the less cool I think standing at the edge of a big ass cliff of cliff, is, uh, cliff of death is. Yeah, that makes me nervous to look back and yeah. see that there. Yeah, me too. <laughs> well, we started to come down this and uh, it's hurting my knee a little bit. So I'm not gonna go any further. Matt went down. I'm gonna head back up. Thank you. Howdy. Howdy, look at this. Yeah. Howdy. That's what a, the, where exactly are they? Gonna in. Are they gonna jump off that cliff into the water? What? Go down the falls? I Sorry. Down what the heck? Like yeah, and it, and it goes to the falls. They're gonna take those well, down the falls? One of those three people is in trouble. Because when they find out there's no place to go, the guy who thought that was a good idea is gonna get a lot of shit from the other two. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Bob. I thought you said there was a place to put in here. Go, 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 go. We are going to Frost Top. Frost Top for an ice cream cone. Woohoo! We stopped for ice cream. We stopped for ice cream. Yes, we did. At the Frost Top. What, are you, what did you order? I ordered a Huckleberry Sunday. What did you order? What, what did we get? A Huckleberry, Huckleberry shake. shake. Shake, yeah. Matt and I got Huckleberry shakes. This is all Huckleberry all the time. Yeah. This is. We should change the name of the channel to Huckleberries. <laughs> the Huckleberries. I'll be your Huckleberry. I'll be your Huckleberry. Maybe how's your Huckleberry Sunday? It's really good. I feel like my lips might be turning purple. There's a lot of Huckleberries in there. This is my Huckleberry milkshake. Matt, how's your Mahukabara nutshake? Mm -hmm. It is amazing. There's nothing like this. No. That's why we stopped. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's us. We're giving you the full experience, Matt. Yeah, really. Uh, yeah. Can't get enough of this stuff. Yeah.
We made it back to Frank's place. Ooh, it was a little hot driving back. Ooh, the air conditioning in this van doesn't exist. So it was hot, wasn't it? It was really hot. But we are back. And yes, if you're wondering, the Forerunner does have air conditioning. So, but it's still hot. But yeah, we're back. We're gonna clean up the van a little bit. And uh, then we'll probably head over to the house. Unpack. Rip, unpack, Start chill out, do some laundry, have sloppy joes for dinner. Great trip, guys. Awesome. Stay tuned for the next episode of Buses, Bikes, and Beers, where Dad takes us on a float trip down the South Fork of the Snake River in his awesome wood float boat. <laughs>